Welcome everyone to the OTRS Central Extreme Rules 2017 preview show, to which some of you may be asking yourself, is this son of a bitch just going to sit there and shit all over the thought and concept of the show and not give it a fair chance come Sunday? Probably. Probably. When I hear Extreme Rules, I think about all types of crazy crap that can happen. I think about bar bar baseball bats and flaming shards of ass glass and everything else. But when I look at this Sunday's show, it feels more like it would be appropriate to call it different rules with some weird and stupid match stipulations. When you look at this show, it doesn't look like Extreme Rules. I don't know why they're calling it Extreme Rules, because several of these matches don't have extreme stipulations at all. They're just different, and in some cases don't make a lot of sense. And furthermore, it just is further evident to me why I'm glad I've skipped a couple of these WWE pay-per-views in 2017. Because if I sit there and try to muster myself through most of Raw on Monday night, and it's bad, and for the delusional people, SmackDown may be just a tad bit better, but what is that really saying? I usually don't have the energy or the time or the desire to spend two hours of watching SmackDown, I ain't throwing another three hours on a Sunday night. Holy Christ. And especially when you have one of these every two to three damn weeks now. It just, again, thought it was too damn much before. It's really too damn much now, especially if you're one of those really hardcore people that also watches NXT and also watches 205 Live. Holy hell, how do you do it? Get out of the house, get a life, do something. Because I assure you, this isn't that good. And most notably, is not worth this much time for you to invest in it. But if you do, I wish I could be like you. I salute you. Because you've got a passion that I've been spending years trying to find. But even with all that said, while I'm glad I've skipped some of the pay-per-views uh, this year, I'm not skipping this one. I'm just not smart enough to do so. But maybe it's just wanting something to happen. I don't know. But I am indeed going to sit down Sunday night and watch Extreme Rules. I'm going to be live tweeting the show at OTR Central as the Twitter handle. So let's get on there Sunday night, 8 o'clock Eastern, and let's have some damn fun with the whole thing. Agreed? Agreed. All right, so let's talk about the show. The match outlook. Here's what we've got. An IC title match with a senseless stipulation. Miz is clearly the heel. Ambrose is supposed to be allegedly the face, although when you look at him, Miz gives you far more reasons to be entertained, therefore far more reasons to like him, and Ambrose gives you that vibe once again that he doesn't give a shit. It's sad when you look at Ambrose too because Ambrose was one of those guys four or five years ago that everybody thought had big money on him in the, end, in the WWE in the future. He was going to be one of the bedrock pillar stars. And this dude has gotten no fucking better. When I say no fucking better, I'm probably paying him too much of a compliment. He's gotten worse. He's regressed. And I don't know what it is. Maybe the dude needs to wash his ass. Maybe that'll break him out of this funk, this jinx. Maybe he needs to stop fucking with Renee Young. I don't know and I don't care. But whatever it is, this dude should be far ahead of where he actually is. And should be much better than he actually is. Or, again, when you look at the stipulation for this match, it just, to me, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Even if you want to spin it this way. You're talking about if the babyface champion gets disqualified, he loses the title. This is the type of stipulation you use for a babyface to try and get the belt. Saying the heel has gotten themselves counted out. The heel has gotten themselves disqualified. And you get to this point where the heels ran away, he's hid, he's ducked the challenge, and you say no more. You have to have a winner, you have to have a clear result, and if he tries any of the shenanigans or any of the bullshit, then he's going to lose this match. And usually you would do this when the heel is the champion and the babyface is changed, and again, it just speaks to the whole dynamics of how everything is screwed up with WWE and their product today. Because if you're The Miz, why wouldn't you pay the drifter to, to give you one clean shot? I mean, from a storyline standpoint, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you have Elias Sampson just knock the hell out of you? Because do it as soon as the bell rings. You don't have to go through a whole grueling, grueling match. You just take one shot. It could even be just like uh, one kick to the head or something. You'll recover, and you'll still retain your championship. 
or you're excuse me, you won't retain it, you'll win the title. So if you're the heel, wouldn't that be the smart thing to do? Or why not just pretend to have Maurice hit you? And it's even one of those things where she doesn't even have to actually hit you. You just sit there and give the illusion when the back, referee's back is turned that she hit him. And he acts like he's hit, a la Eddie Guerrero type of shit. And then you've got the referee looking around trying to determine what happens. And now the crowd's going crazy. It's a way to actually work the stipulation. The way they're doing it now is stupid. I hope Miz gets the championship because Dean Ambrose in no way, shape, or form is belt worthy for any belt in this goddamn company right now. Wash your ass, get rid of that ridiculous comb forward, and get back to work and try to get better. It's pathetic. Speaking of things that are pathetic, the fact that Sasha Banks went from being an integral part of this Divas revolution to now she's just a backup bitch in a mixed tag match. My oh my, how the mighty have fallen. Sasha is now playing backup to Rich fucking Swan. You want to know you're in a bad place as a character? They throw you in to anything that involves any cruiserweights that aren't at this point in time either Austin Aries or Neville. It's one thing if she was associated with Neville and she had turned heel. It's one thing if she had associated with Austin Aries and this and that. She's associating with Rich Swan. And you can say, well, maybe this facilitates a heel turn at this point in time. Who gives a shit? Just like the WWE doesn't give a shit. When they look at somebody like Rich Swan, they're like, hey, you're black. You got a little bit of a rhythm. Here's what we want you to do. Something new. We've never done before. We want you to dance and act suspect as shit. What is it about the WWE when they look at so many of these black men, they say, we want you to dance and we want you to act all types of fucking suspect and questionable. Why can't these dudes act like fucking men? Why can't these guys do something other than having to fucking dance and smile and do all this stupid shit? Seriously. But it's whatever. I spent more time talking about that match and didn't actually talk about the match at all because it doesn't fucking matter. The Cruiserweight title match matters a little bit. It's a submission match. Is it really an Extreme Rules match? Eh, we'll let it slide. It can fit there. And at least you could say from a storyline standpoint, this can make some sense. These guys have been going at it, you know, going back to the road to WrestleMania. You know, this is Aries' third chance. Here's what I want to say to Austin Aries, though. If you're a real true vegan, your number one mission, the number one goal of the program should be to win that championship and then replace it with some type of environmentally friendly, biodegradable, plant-based fucking title. Because if you don't and you continue to wear that leather strap belt, you're a fake vegan. Fake vegan. Who, Austin Aries? You, 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 you are a fake vegan. It's ridiculous. And try as they might, WWE has tried to put their screws away division to sleep. And to the credit of Neville and Aries, it at least hangs on life support. You know, it was still miscast on Raw to begin with. And of course, I was fucking right about that. Period. Its natural home where it belongs is on SmackDown, and that's where the hell it should be. Everything involving tag teams, frankly, should be on Raw. The Cruiserweights should be on SmackDown. It is a much more natural fit for all parties involved. Are they going to throw the strap on Aries at this point in time? Now you know you've gotten to this point. Keep the damn thing on Neville. I don't know why you would put it on Aries. Unless you say it's an excuse to have another match between these two, and I don't know if we have to have that at that point, but if we do, that's nice too. Then we get to the Vince Russo special, the always good when it's on a pole match, which you might say um, it could be Paige's favorite match stipulation. You used to laugh when we called Brad Maddox beef mode, and we wanted to see honey beef mode at WrestleMania 29. Well, Paige found out what beef mode was all about, baby. But she might prefer if the pole was black. Just saying. Put a whole new definition to up, up, down, down, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Anyways, talking about this Kendo stick on a fucking pole match and make Vince Russo scream with bro ecstasy. You look at the two combatants. Alexa Bliss has personality and submit factor for days with absolutely zero ring skills. Like, she's a great personality. She's got the ability to talk. She can get a reaction out of people, the right type of reaction out of people. 
But she's horrible in the ring. She is the drizzling shits. I wouldn't have her anywhere near a fucking title. To me, until she got better as an actual worker, as a performer, I would be having her do everything other than actually be a wrestler. Because she can make other stars, too. Um, but then you get to Bailey, who has some ring skills, but she's not great. She's okay. But lacking in personality all fucking day. To me, when I look at this, it's more like Alexa Bliss is the babyface and Bailey is the heel. Because what is there about Bailey that is likable? And let's be honest, not that corny old shit of, I try and this has been my dream. Ah, oh, shut the fuck up. Take your millennial hugging shit and pound it up your ass. Mm-mm. I honestly don't care about this match. There's at least a 60% chance this match will be shit. Just because you put some type of stipulation in it doesn't make the match good automatically. And especially when you have Alexa Bliss in the match, you can use all the stipulations in the world, but it doesn't mean that she's any fucking good. Who wins here? Hopefully Alexa Bliss, and we can move on from Bailey next. The one that really scratches has me scratch my head the most is the tag title match. You got Cesaro and Sheamus, and then you've got the Hardys. And when you think about the Hardys, and you've got a pay-per-view like Extreme Rules, what could you think of as possible stipulations for these guys? Ladder match? Seems only natural. Maybe, playing off of history, a TLC match. <laughs> only seems natural. But instead, they choose a steel cage. Steel cage! What the hell about this suggests that they need a steel cage? What the hell about the Hardys and their WWE history indicates that this should be a steel cage match? You know, all the excitement about uh, the Hardys coming back to WWE and how fun and wonderful that is means shit in the grand scheme of things if they're just going to treat them like everybody fucking else. And that's exactly what the WWE is going to try to do because they don't know what the fuck they're doing with any damn body. It's like the WWE sits there and says, this can really get over. This could probably get over. So let's do the exact counterculture thing to intentionally get them over as little as fucking possible. Like, that's the game for them. And they just feature the Hardys like they're pretty much any other freaking tag team. And you can sit there and talk about, you know, the legal wranglings between the Hardys and Impact Wrestling about the broken gimmick and believe all that shit. Delete, delete, delete that train of thought. The bottom line is you got the fucking Hardys. One of the greatest tag teams you've ever had. One of the greatest tag teams in the history of the business. Doesn't matter what you have available to you and what you don't. Figure out a better way to utilize them than what you fucking have. Sorry. Hopefully the Hardys retain their titles here. You can make the argument what they should be putting over another team. Uh, build it up for a while. Make them really matter as much as you can. And then when somebody beats them, it's going to be a really, really big deal. Because if you have the Hardys win the belt at WrestleMania too, about two months later dropping the title, then they're just like everybody else. And as a tag team, the Hardys are not just like everybody else. So don't book this match this way. And WWE, stop booking them that way! And then we get to the match that is most certainly bound to potentially piss me off the most, and that is the Fatal Five-Way number one contenders match. The winner gets to face Brock Lesnar at a future pay-per-view. Ah, oh, who gives a shit? Let's size this bad boy up. Bray Wyatt, who was so important to where he won the title, just so that way John Cena didn't have to drop it to Randy Orton, just so that way Randy Orton got the honors at WrestleMania. Just so that way Randy Orton could then be the transitional guy to get the belt to Jinder fucking Mahal. And he's in this match? Give me a fucking break. Seth Rollins? It doesn't matter how many words that begin with F that you use to describe you freaking fucking flipping Rollins. It doesn't matter. He's a terrible babyface and has no business being in the main event picture at this point in time. Roman Reigns? What the fuck more do I need to say about Roman Reigns at this point in time? The one thing you probably could feel the most confident about is somehow, some way, this company is not going to have Roman Reigns win this match on Sunday because they've got delusions of grandeur for him and Lesnar at WrestleMania 30 fucking 4. Ugh, gag me already. To me, the guy that provides the most compelling and interesting option for winning this match is Samoa Joe. Like, looking at the five participants... In this match, the guy that I think could have the most interesting and compelling and believable program with Brock Lesnar is Samoa Joe. 
So there, there can't be any chance that he can win this shit. So what this means is all the Finn fucktards are going to be excited because, Yay, Finn Balor! He wins! He's awesome! He's going to face Brock Lesnar and I buy it and I believe it and all oh, bullshit. Once you get past the fucking body paint, once you get past the entrance, the dude has nothing. I'm tired of people trying to sit there and manufacture that this guy has a whole hell of a lot more than he really fucking does. It just isn't there. What is the big fucking deal about this guy? Like, I can't even see, like, CM Punk. I can see Daniel Bryan. I can get why people would be so adamantly in favor of these guys, especially when they were given the WWE platform, and especially in the case of Daniel Bryan, when he grew and developed into an Owen Hart type of performer. You could see it, and it hits you in the face whether you want to admit it or not, but there was absolutely nothing about Fergal Devitt fucking Finn Balor that indicates he in any way, shape, or form deserves any opportunity to wrestle a Brock Lesnar for a world championship. Brock Lesnar! Who in the fuck thinks this is interesting? Who the fuck thinks this is compelling? Other than from a pure train wreck standpoint, where they're just looking forward to Brock Lesnar throwing around Finn Balor for 20 fucking minutes. Because if you have Finn Balor look like anything close to a believable, viable opponent against Brock, you make your product look stupid, and more importantly, you make your special attraction, part-time world champion Brock Lesnar look fucking stupid. You had a competitive match with Finn Balor, that's dumb. I don't see what everybody has a heart off of. Well, he didn't lose his title, he had to surrender. Who gives a shit? He should have won it in the first fucking place. Now look, I'm not saying someday you couldn't make a big deal out of it. Create a road to WrestleMania out of him pursuing and potentially winning one of the world championships. I'm not saying you could never do that. But I resent the fact that so many people bitch about a Roman Reigns or a Jinder Mahal or this guy or that guy winning a fucking title. And it takes them a long time to do it. But they're poorly built. But somebody like Finn Balor just comes in with the fucking flaming rocket ship of flaming shards of ass blast. Shoves straight up him. And we instantly have him beat Roman Reigns. We instantly throw him into the world title picture. We instantly have him win. And now we're coming right back. It's like you can't fucking quit the dude. How about having the dude show that he could be a more well-rounded and complete performer? At that point in time, I will grant you an opportunity to where I could say, okay, I'll put up with one match between him and Brock Lesnar, even if I still view it as unbelievable. But this shit, man, is just fucking ridiculous. What the hell is wrong with everybody? Like, at least at this point in time, if you told me it was going to be Shinsuke Nakamura and Brock Lesnar, I'd buy it more because Nakamura has a more credible MMA background, and he's a much better fucking performer and a much better personality. It's not just a size thing, so get over that hang-up. It's the fact that Finn Balor being in a world title picture for the WWE is fucking retarded. And people continuing to push for this and push for this and want this is fucking retarded. Jinder Mahal winning the belt is fucking shit. Well, what the hell is Finn Balor winning a belt? Or even wrestling for a belt? What the hell does that represent? Unbelievable. So on Sunday night, the big prediction of all is that the internet will rejoice and I'll be fucking bitter and pissed off and come on here crying, ranting, and raving about how stupid this shit is. Pretty much what I've been doing for six and a half years now. So why stop?